forget about heaven and hell so much. They don't want to dwell on those types of issues. They would rather just, you know, not even address the issue or, or explain that away in whatever philosophy they want to use. But what this does is it gives them, in their minds, a license to sin and live like the devil because if they can condemn all religion, including Bible-believing Christianity, and lump them in with the Catholic Church, then hey, there's no real truth. I can live like the devil. I can be merry, drink, for t tomorrow we die, as the Bible talks about. And we can live whatever way we want to live. That's the ultimate motivation. They want it that way. Because they don't want to have to be accountable to a holy God. That's, and that's the real reason. But you know what? It's not going to matter. It's not going to matter if you or they don't want to be accountable to a holy God. Because you know what? You're going to be. Whether you're a Christian or whether you're not. If you are a Christian, the Bible says we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. As a, as a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, we must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And I don't believe it's going to be a pretty place for most people. The Bible says that some will be saved, yet so as by fire. Now exactly what that means, I don't know. But it doesn't sound real great. But they'll be saved. But the great white throne judgment, which is for unbelievers, is where the vast majority of people are going. How do I know that? Because the Bible says, narrow is the way which leadeth to life eternal, and few there be that find it. Broad is the way which leadeth to destruction. And many there be that go thereat. So, I know just because what the Bible says, that the vast majority of people aren't going to be saved. And they're going to wind up at the great white throne judgment where they're going to be cast into the lake of fire to burn forever for all eternity. That's the, those two scenarios are the ultimate end of everybody listening to this tape right now. This audio. Either the judgment seat of Christ to heaven, or the great white throne judgment into the lake of fire. People don't want to be accountable to a God like that. They don't even want to believe He really exists. They want to explain away and discredit Jesus Christ any way they possibly can so that they can have a license to sin and live like the devil and not have any convictions. Take away, take away from us this Holy One of Israel as the Bible talks about where, where, where a lot of times Israel got into that mode. They didn't want to hear about the Lord Jesus Christ. So if we go further into Isaiah 47.13 Isaiah 47.13 Here's another um, warning from the Lord. This is judgment upon Babylon. Let's just start at verse 12. Stand now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries, we're talking about witchcraft here, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth, if so be thou shalt be able to profit, if so be thou mayest prevail. In other words, are, are you going to be able to profit and prevail through witchcraft? In the sight of God? I don't think so. Verse 13, Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, and the stargazers, and the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things which shall come upon thee. God's, God's mocking them. Because they've put all their faith in astrologers and stargazers and prognosticators, or whoever else, all their witches and sorcerers. He said, he said do it. God said, do it. Let now the astrologers and the stargazers and the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee. See, they can't save them from these things which shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as a stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall, there shall not be a coal to warm at, nor fire to sit by it. So, God's challenging them. See, astrology is not going to save you. So I wanted to just establish that right off the bat, that, this, this, that the Bible has nothing to do with astrology. Okay, it, it, it's actually the very thing that's condemned in the, in the sentence in Old Testament Levitical law was a death sentence. So it's pretty serious in God's eye. And it's still pretty serious in God's eyes today. Because the Bible says, I am the Lord, I changeth not. So the, we go further. It says, in addition to the general faulty concept of astrology in the Bible being joined at the hip, 
The specific statements made in the film about the supposed link reflect a disregard for historical facts. For example, the movie states that the number 12 in the Bible refers to the 12 zodiacal signs. So the 12 patriarchs, the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 disciples of Jesus, etc. are supposed to match the number of the astrology astrological signs. This is without this is out of the realm of possibility as Genesis was written around 1000 BC with the actual events having occurred even earlier. History shows that the division of the stars and the constellations in, into the 12 zodiacal signs did not occur until the Babylonians made the divisions around the 5th century BC so their timing is totally off. We just, we're just scratching the surface here on way, different ways that this information can be refuted and rebutted. The meteor part of the first section of the movie is devoted to the allegations of Jesus Christ being nothing but a combination of pagan deity attributes that the gospel writers borrowed to create their own new God. For this short refutation, focus will be given on what appears to be the major authority used in this portion of the movie and the first major mythological figure presented as the forerunner of Jesus, who they refer to as Horus. So basically what they're saying in this movie, the big thing about this is that Horus, which is a pagan god that we're going to talk extensively about today, was all Jesus was was basically a repackaged version of Horus. That's what we're going to be looking at today. Using the logic that if the research on their primary character is flawed, which it is, it is likely the same faulty investigation methods and materials will be presented in everything else that, they, that follows. Also note that it is the absence of documented scholarly, scholarly material supporting the movie's stance that challenges the position stated in the film. See, I believe there's probably a lot of truth after the first 37 minutes, but they totally discredit themselves. I mean, religion 101, you're going to hear a lot today, that word used out. We're going to talk about how incredibly ludicrous their, their, their assertions are. And really, by making these assertions in the first 37 minutes, really what they're doing is discrediting the whole rest of the movie. The Zeitgeist movie makes these claims about the Egyptian god Horus. He was born on December 31st of a virgin by Isis. Okay, now we're going to talk a lot about December 25th, okay? Because, let me tell you, just state this right up front, to whet your appetite on this. December 25th has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. His birth, nothing. Never did, never will. Okay, we're going to talk about this in depth. So, I could care less if Horace was born on December 25th, or October 25th, or January, I could care less, because that has no bearing on Jesus Christ. It has bearing on pagan religion, but not on the Lord Jesus Christ, and, his, and the Word of God. So we're going to, bear with me on that. The second thing that the Zeitgeist movie claims about the Egyptian god Horus is that a star in the east was proclaimed his arrival, and then three kings came to adore the newborn Savior. He was a prodigal teacher at the age of 12. At age of 30, he was baptized and began his ministry. Horus had 12 disciples. Horus was betrayed. He was crucified. He was buried for three days. He was re resurrected after three days. We're going to look at all of these things. Okay, and see if, if we can historically prove this is true. Now, this, this report that I'm, I'm talking about today, that we're reading from, is heavily referenced. Okay, there's, there's already guys that have went up there and rebutted the Christ conspiracy and the Zeitgeist movie. Because really, rebutting the Zeitgeist movie, you have to rebut the Christ conspiracy. So, it's already been done. It's just that somebody going up there watching this movie, knowing nothing about, um, you know, the Bible or, or these types of things, they're a good likelihood they're going to get sucked into this because it's impressive in the way that they present it. They're so matter-of-fact, so flippant, and they're very matter-of-fact in a very arrogant way. As though it's just a foregone conclusion and, you know, you stupid people, why didn't you just know all of this? Because, you know, you should have known this because, you know, it's just a matter-of-fact. You've been lied to your whole life. You know, basically what they're saying is, is they're their basic version, if you were to believe them, is that God is dead, essentially. Because that's basically what they're saying. The God of the Bible is, is a fallacy. If we would believe what they said. Do you 
don't realize how many people are going to go to hell as a result of this movie, and that the people that made the Zeitgeist movie, their blood is going to be on their hands. Do you realize the punishment in hell that they're going to have to pay? Because